Hey, what's going on? It's uh, Timmy Joe here, making videos about aftermarket heat sinks that I've already made the video, but we gotta do it again. Uh, just to put it to rest, put it to bed. Fortunately, there's no solution, and you don't have to watch the video if you don't want, but there's no fixing this aftermarket cooling solution. And there's no need to do it anyways anymore because AIB partner cards are out and you don't have to buy the blower models and mod them anymore. You can just buy a good, I don't know, uh, MSI Mech uh, XT card or a power color, uh, you know, the Red Devil. Like, that one looks super awesome. You can buy a good card. They'll have overclocking headroom. They'll have things and stuff. It's a better idea. But if somehow you get stuck with a blower model, the only way to fix it is to buy a water block, which I discovered in the last video is a very effective way of eking a little bit of performance out of your dang, uh, after whatever, 5700 XT. But as far as aftermarket coolers go, this is the second time I'm testing, and yeah, it's the Accelero 4 this time. So what's different? I know you, I already watched this video, I know. So what's different? Well, let's check it out, okay? Ugh. Everyone was telling me I was dumb. They saw some German guy put this thing on there and he was doing whatever and I couldn't really, I think he was German anyways. I, I tried to watch the video with like subtitles and see what he was saying, but anyways, this is the Accelero 4, but really it's the same heat sink from the Accelero 3 on the bottom and then you don't glue any heat sinks onto the memory and the VRM. They have this weird back plate, which actually does a pretty decent job. It's dissipating a fair bit of heat. It's at 51 degrees right now, so it's pretty toasty, this back plate. And you secure it on there with some, uh, here, I'll show you how it's mounted because I videotaped the whole damn thing. So yeah, it goes through there, and uh, then you put some uh, thermal pads on the back of the PCB, and then that's supposed to radiate the heat through to the big heat sink here, and then the airflow from your case would alleviate that. And you can see here, I've got a pretty damn good example for a case for the use case for this. There's a 120 mil fan right above it, and then there's three big fans blowing fresh air into the case. There's six with a, uh, a push pull blowing air through my um, my brad and then there's another one down here so there's like a whole whack of fans in this case for this to be the best case scenario for it okay so it's not my case it's not my application because uh, I already tested this a bunch of different ways uh, in fact you're supposed to put this little piece of plastic in between there thought maybe this was the problem because there's you know a bunch of capacitors and resistors and stuff that poke through the back of the PCB and when you're putting a metal heat sink on there you want to make sure that you don't you know connect anything and short circuit anything so they get you to cut out your VRM and memory on this and then put it in there well I actually just put thermal pads across the whole heat sink and loaded it up and then squish it all back down thinking maybe that would fix something didn't fix much so we see here we're running stock Okay, the only thing I've changed in MSI Afterburner is I've increased the fan speed to 100%. What that does with this cooler is, is it increases the fan speed to 2000 uh, RPM of 2000. That's as far as it goes. These fans on this Accelero, they're not designed to go any faster than 2000 RPM no matter how far you push the slider, okay? No other settings are set up here to, for overclocking. And we see we're hitting uh, a memory temperature of 86 degrees, 88 degrees, 86, up to 90, okay? Uh, by the, well, here, 88. By the time we get to where it's showing the Galax symbol in TimeSpy, it, it'll be saying 90 here. So what are the reasons you buy an aftermarket cooler over the blower model? Well, I mean, maybe you're buying it because your heatsink broke or your fans are broken, but more than likely in this particular situation, you're buying an aftermarket cooler to reduce the noise, which I gotta say this thing, even with the fans at 2000 RPM, the max they'll go is pretty damn quiet. It's barely audible, which is, that's, that's a plus. But you're also looking for overclock headroom, right? You're looking for a better cooling solution that was on, than what was on your blower or your other, you know, your card. So this thing's supposed to be better, right? Well, it's not, it's really not, unfortunately. The memory and VRM temperatures are getting way too high, 90 degrees as we see, okay? And that's what they reach with the stock cooler, but the stock cooler is running at 2000 RPM too, or 2200, 2300 RPM, and then you can go and max the slider out and make it go 4000 RPM, and oh yeah, it sounds like a jet engine, but it certainly cools 
better than this can cool because there's nothing else to do here except for, and I did this, actually put a fan right on the heat sink. And in doing so, I did reduce the temperatures, maybe about five degrees, but something on the board is getting hot. I can't figure out what it is because even when I put one of these coolers on, even when I have the temperatures in check, like you saw in the last video where I put 220 mil DF Storm, which are 3,500 3, RPM fans over the heatsink, something's not getting cool. There's a, 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 a chip on the board, on the opposite side of the board that needs direct cooling, needs some sort of something that, that can't be achieved with this. And we see, I haven't even overclocked it yet and I just saw it spike to 92. So the stock cooler will get this thing to 92 and really you can't overclock past a certain, you know, uh, whatever. You can't overclock really at all with this stock um, heatsink on the anniversary edition that I have at least until you increase the RPMs to like 3000 and then the temperatures come down especially with that mod I showed you where you put the washers behind there the gamers nexus figured out but let's say right now I want to go and overclock the card because that's one of the reasons why you'd be getting an accelero I know I'm all over the map in this video it's like the fifth time I've shot it I'm gonna set the power limit to 50% that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna touch the memory overclock. I'm not gonna touch the core overclock. And in doing that, little, uh, you know, moving the slider up to 50%, that generally uh, will increase your frequency up like 50 or 75 megahertz by giving it that extra power, at least on the anniversary edition. So increasing the power slider actually nets you more performance as long as the cooling is there to back it up. But we can already see our memory starts to climb. 92, it will climb, it will. Here, we'll go to when it climbs because I don't want to waste too much time. All right, so this has been running for about four or five minutes and 98 degrees. And all I did was push the power slider up to 50%, which does increase the uh, frequency on the GPU core. But I guess in turn, other things like the VRM get hot enough that it forces the memory to get hotter as well. And we see it hit 100 degrees here. So as far as you know, the reasons to put an aftermarket cooler on, I think the noise over a, you know, a blower model would be pretty high up there. It does bring the noise down, but the cooling performance is worse than even the stock cooler at its stock fan curve. So what is the point of getting this? I mean, you pay $50 and you expect some extra overclocking headroom or something. I don't know why Arctic would have sent me the second one to test if they didn't test it themselves and already figured this out. Now, caveats. Maybe the 5700, because it's clocked lower, although it should have technically the same memory speed and temperatures, you know, uh, and the same like VRM and stuff like that. Maybe it would do a little better with one of these. It's to the point where you might actually get some overclocking headroom because, you know, you could do the power play mod and get it up there near an XT. And this seems to do all right with cooling before you get to the level of my card. But I have no power play tables implemented or anything here. This is the stock 5700 XT anniversary edition performance, which is like an overclocked, you know, a pre-overclocked XT. And this cooling solution is, is killing it. It's just not working right. It looks stuttery, it looks not very good at all. And that's because with a very minor overclock of just increasing the power limit, we see the memory get to 100 degrees and that means I have absolutely no headroom to do anything else. It's just that simple. So we're back to square one, the thing I said in the last video where I was all excited, I fell out of my chair. What's going on? <laughs> because we were going to test this and show you what partner models were like. Now the partner models are out and there's, there's no reason to even be doing this video except for just to satisfy Arctic who should have done their own testing. I, I really like that you guys made this product and unfortunately there's just not an easy way to cool the components on the uh, underside uh, on like the PCB and this weird way you came up with is pretty in innovative. I got to give you that but it's obviously not translating into proper performance for this specific card. I mean, I've put this thing on, uh, or I've put an Accelero 2 on some uh, Pascal cards, some Nvidia cards, never had issues like this. I always saw an increase in performance over a blower card. It was, it was easy. But this specifically, I'm getting worse performance no matter what. 
In fact, I ran Time Spy a bunch of times and I couldn't get it to uh, a graphic score above 9,000 when I could get like 9,500 with the blower model set to 100%. So this thing's not even as good as the blower model. It's really kind of sad. Forget this. We're not seeing any better performance doing this. We're not seeing any better thermal, you know, reduction. It's just, to turn it off, I got better projects that I need to be getting to. I wasted a lot of time with this video. Got a blue computer back there that's going to be fun. It's like a little used PC I bought for cheap on Kijiji that I'm going to try and make some money off of. I'm definitely going to get to this later this week. I mean, look how this is bigger than the Accelero. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, look at how big this thing is, right? It's so hot. Look how big this thing is. And this thing dwarfs it. <laughs> so, unless you're MSI designing a good cooler for a, a card where you can design the PCB and make mounting holes, like you can see on this card, it has, um, you know, the coolers on the VRM under there that you know that that's all snapped down with some thermal pads and stuff and the, you can see there's fin heat sinks that are actually touching the power components on this this is a proper solution unfortunately when you're arctic and you don't get to make the pcbs and you got to work with what the company provided and there's no holes to screw down heat sinks onto the memory in the vrm you got to come up with this backplate solution and i mean it's an it's cool that it even works at all but unfortunately it just, it barely even fits in the computer. I had to put it in the second slot and then, uh, cause it would hit the, the memory, see? And then I had to take this piece of my motherboard out because it wouldn't fit in there because there's these like little fasteners you have to put in there to, uh, and, and like that, I had to take the plastic out so it would fit around that. So it's just a huge pain in the ass, even if it worked right. So there's no reason to buy one for the 5700. I'd love to say, hey, it really works well. Go check out my Amazon affiliate link but I can't. I'm not watching me do Instagram and Twitter. I've wasted incredibly too much of your time. Look forward to some more things on the channel. Like uh, th this video card reviewed versus that video card. And this is a used computer build I bought for like uh, not so much money and we're gonna try and make a profit on it. Now that I've gussied it up and made it look all cool. I mean, look how baby blue everything is inside it. So cool. But I'm not watching me do Instagram and Twitter. I'm also, god damn it, available for, for, for uh, Patreon. That was a good sell. I'll see you guys in the next video. Doing the work. Putting in the man hours. <sighs> see you later.